Hello, everyone. I'm so glad that we're back today. Today, I have wonderful guests. Um, some people I've been known for, for a long time who've been in ministry together for a long time, who've been married for a long time. So I'm so happy to have Pastor Kelly's with me today, um, who they are, their ministry is called The Well, and they have a wonderful ministry. Um, and uh, since the pandemic, I know a lot of times we meet on virtual, right? Um, but it's, it's fantastic. Um, and they're just doing some wonderful work. And because this is the month of love, I had to bring on a couple that I want to think represents love. They have a longevity in their marriage. And I want to get all the juicy secrets of how you make marriage work um, with children and grandchildren and how you minister together. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you for having us. We so appreciate this opportunity. Yes, yes. You guys look as young as you did. 20 years ago. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, first, I just want to put a shout out to you guys because you guys do a catering business together. I mean, I've seen you do some fantastic setups. I know the food is wonderful. How is that going? Tell me about the catering business. Oh, the catering business has grown um, greatly. We've been in Atlanta for almost 10 years. 10 years. Well, it'll be 10 years. And um, we started it around the second year that we were here and each year it has grown and we're so proud of what we do um, to bring these wonderful events to life for people. A lot of hard work, but it's wow. worth it in the end. <laughs> Want to quit every time, but we're like, at the end of it, we're like, yes, we did that. God did that. <laughs> so right. It's exciting. Yes. Yeah. No, I know it's a lot of work, but you know, this is the thing is sometimes it's hard to find a good caterer, right? Because people do nice setups and then you take the food and it's garbage. <laughs> so it's like, oh, what happened? You know, to the food. But that's the thing I love about you because I know you guys can actually cook and the food is wonderful and the set setup, everything is so professional. So I love that. Um, <clears throat> and raining from New York and then moving to Atlanta um, and starting a business can be a daunting task. So I'm so you know excited about what God has done for you guys. It's been amazing. Now, can we talk about how long have you guys been married? Where, when did you meet? Tell us the love story. How did it begin? I'm, I'm not, I'm not really. Static. It's very static. Oh, can you hear me? No, I was saying, how did the love story begin? When did you meet? How long have you guys been married? Ooh, that oh, was up to me years ago. Yeah. Um, 30 what we met in 1989 yeah. um, and we, I, I was in school he came to my school to see somebody else <laughs> but um, yeah but um, ended up with this one <laughs> <laughs> it was um, definitely you know we were teenagers I was 18 when we got married he was 21 mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people doubted um, and yeah. guess, guess what they were wrong so <laughs> We praise God for that. You know, we even, I think, surprised ourselves in yeah. some of this. Uh, um, having still stood through a whole lot of things. And uh, yes. uh, to God be the glory. That's all I can say. <clears throat> yes. To God be the glory. I don't know why I hear that static. I don't know if it's the... Okay, I don't know if it's the connection or what, whatever. But yes, to God be the glory. 30 years. That's a long time. We just don't see marriages like that anymore. Um, so many times marriages end over people not just being happy for the moment, right? What do you think the keys are for your longevity for your marriage? Keys for longevity. This is the thing. I don't think there is one specific key because mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's a master key for marriage. There are several different keys because the keys that I have for our house won't unlock the keys for your, for your house. house. Mm -hmm. um, so I believe that it's really individualized um, when it comes to your relationship. Um, but there, there are some main characteristics that each marriage should have, such as love and respect 
and um, really just staying true to the vows. We have to really be really be mindful of the vows that we make um, when we do get married. I believe when we got married, it was forever. Um, I had a good role model. My grandparents were married for over 50 years before they parted in death. Um, so that was always my goal, my vision, that um, this thing was de to death it was part. Um, but it, it has taken a lot of trial. It's taken a lot of error. But because we were willing to see ourselves through all of that, we're still yes. we're still standing. So I think that's good. I want to hear what you have to say, Pastor Kelly. <laughs> I'm the quiet one. Yes, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm, I'm very much um, the quiet one. Um, there has been struggles. Um, we've had our ups, we've had our downs, we had our hits, we had our misses. Yes. Um, but the only thing that I can say, it, it was God. Mm -hmm. It was God that has seen us through, through the trials and through the tribulations, and um, He's the only one that um, we have trusted in and that has brought us through and has seen us through. Amen. You know, I will say this um, too, that I noticed that whenever someone goes from one place to another place, there's growth, right? Um, I don't know. Do you hear static? I'm still yeah, static, yeah. Static. I don't know why is so much static. This is weird. Wait, hold on. Let me try to leave and come back out. Have we lost you? No, I think I'm coming back. Okay. I'm trying to get the mic to, to fix itself. I, I I've never heard that static. I don't know why it's like that. It's weird. But I was saying that uh, I know that when people move from state to state, that it's a lot of growth. Was there growth from you going from New York to Atlanta? Yeah, it was um, a challenge, um, a decision in that, um, first of all, we followed the Holy Ghost. Um, but the challenge came in when, when people were opposed to it, um, people that we loved and we respected and were like, no, this is not your time to go. Um, mm -hmm. But we follow the lead of the Holy Ghost through it all. We love you, we respect you, but we got to go. Um, it was detrimental for us. It was a fresh start. It was something that we needed to do for ourselves. And so we made that, that choice and was like, okay, it's, it's about us. You know, we, we've done what we've done for other people. We've served others, but we really have to pay attention to us now. Um, I, I, I believe it was like a, a redo. That's what I called it. It was a redo mm -hmm. um, that we needed. And so it was like, leave everything behind. I know the Bible says to leave and to cleave. And so that's what we had to do. We had to leave and we had to cleave um, to one another in order to make it through this next process in our lives. We had, it was too much. Sometimes you can get too much commotion in your ears mm -hmm. of people saying their own opinions about things. And that's why it's important sometimes to keep things just really between yourselves. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't matter what others think, what others say. When you know you really just have to make decisions that are, are really good for your own self, your family. Um, we wanted our kids to grow up in a different foundation, um, a different environment, um, especially our boys. Um, we wanted to remove them to, to be in a better place, to have better opportunities um, than what they did when we were in New York. Best decision we have ever made. Um, sometimes it felt a little lonely. Um, sometimes, you know, um, it was like, where is it? Everybody, we out here by ourselves. We out in the boondocks with the cows and the chickens, and we don't know. It, truly, we did not know anybody, and so that that was really tough for us. But that that I believe made us stronger. That made us grow uh, better uh, for one another, and even to relearn each other. 
Uh, I believe in, in marriage, it's just not a one-step process. It's just not one and done. We got to learn because we change. I didn't yeah. like, uh, I, I used to like orange soda. I don't like it now. So, you know, you, we got to relearn one another's lives as we grow um, and as we change through life. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I love that answer because I think that's so true and so prevalent how, you know, I just not not even in a marriage, but I think it's growth when you go to a place where you don't have your friends and your family. And now you have to just depend on God and depend on, you know, for you guys, depend on each other. It's something powerful about that. You know what I'm saying? And it makes you either it either makes or breaks you. I'll tell you that. Right. 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 Yeah, yeah, um, and I love the fact that it made you guys. Help make you stronger because you were already made, but made you stronger. And yes, yes, yes. And you were, to take you to, you know, even a word it talks about people going to an area, desert areas, right? To he to hear God, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Places away from family and friends, mm -hmm. and, and being comfortable, right? Because there's something about being in your home that you feel so comfortable, right? To go, go to a new land and just have to. Um, Relove each other and relive and different and yeah. you know really oh, yeah. you gotta relearn. <laughs> you gotta step it up, yeah. Just just to find out sometimes who are you, you know. So right. You get to a place where I love you, but I don't really like you anymore. <laughs> so so we gotta do something to make us like each other again, you know. Right. Yeah. And that the learning. Right. You gotta start all over. Mm -hmm. All over. Mm -hmm. And that starts with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we go through okay. some stuff, it, it really starts with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, I know that um, if I don't forgive you, it leaves us in a place of where we we were or we are mm -hmm. instead of moving to where we should be. Um, so that being forgiving to one another allows us to move on to the next process in life, the next place in life, the next destination in life. So that, that you know, no, I forgive you goes a long way. And, and you know what? A lot of times we're not going to forget. It's still going to yeah. be there. Mm -hmm. But it's up to yeah. you to not let that thought, that feeling come back and overtake okay. you. Yeah. you yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so good. You know, during this pandemic, we saw a lot of couples divorce. <laughs> um, a lot of couples didn't make it during the pandemic. I don't know if it's because they had to be alone and now they had to get to learn one another like you guys are talking about or if they were forced to deal with one another and we saw people get together. Um, what do you think the pandemic, the effect the pandemic has had on relationships and couples um, because of this times that we're in? Yeah, say that again. Lost you yeah. Oh, I was saying because of the times that we live in, what do you feel like the pan, how do you feel like the pandemic has had effect on relationships, marriages during this time? Oh, like you said, I, I believe it's a make or break time mm -hmm. um, where we were in this together. Right. Um, and literally um, we're secluded from other people. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes being in that quietness, that stillness really helps you to understand who people are. Um, a lot of times you see character come out that you haven't seen before, before. that you may have been blindsided to. Um, but during this time, it, again, it was either a make or break it. Mm -hmm. um, seclusion um, brings you together or it tears you apart. Um, because, you, again, you're not only finding out more about your spouse, but you're finding out more about yourself. Mm -hmm. um, about right. how, how, how tough you are during this time. But you're going to make it, you know. Um, so it's still, again, a, that growth process. I'm still growing. I'm almost 50 years old. And I'm still growing. <laughs> Hopefully not physically, but you know, in my mindset, you know, and, and you, I've been some things I've been more laser focused on now, such as business. Um, but I don't tolerate some crap, you know, I, stuff that you used to do, you don't tolerate no anymore when it comes to your money. That's right. So you grow in being who you are. Um, we've learned to do specific roles in our business and life. This is what you're going to do. This is what I'm going to do. That's good. And so we try not to overstep the boundaries of it um, because then we, we start stepping on each other's toes. Even when we're in the kitchen, okay, 
If you're going to work with the meats, I'm going to do the vegetables, I'm going to do the potatoes. You know, we have those specific roles. You can't have too many cooks in the kitchen. Because yes. it's full No, that is a disaster. <laughs> Definitely. So even in, even in, in life, with marriage, who's going to pay this bill? Who's going to pay that bill? You know, this has to be a specific definition, a definition of what your role is going to be in your relationship. And so I think that during this time, it has been really trying because um, the Lord gave me a word. He said, that don't panic, just adapt. And so sometimes people don't know, all they know is panic. Right. Oh, God, I don't know when this bill got fired. I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. All we know is panic. And so, but the, the reaction, the Lord said, is to adapt. Yeah, you have to and you have to, to And you got to listen in order to be able to do that. You got to mm-hmm. listen to the Holy Spirit and also have that line of communication with one another open. Because we can't close that door. And I think that's the, one of the major things that will split you up in your marriage is lack of communication mm-hmm. and not knowing how to communicate. Um, we good. can communicate by yelling. I don't, you know, but that's not the home, that's, that's not the home that we want to have. We want to be able yeah. to sit down and say, listen, we, listen, we got to talk about some stuff. We've been having pillow talk. At night we go and we visit. Come on, we need to have pillow talk. Get under the covers. It's just talk. It's a, you know, I was upset about this, or you know, I'm frustrated about that, or I'm, I'm mm-hmm. sad about this. You know, that communication is definitely a key in that. I love that because I think some people in in these days it's hard. They they have a hard time having hard communication, like having the hard talks, right? Um, having those talks that mean so much to the heart, um, and we need to learn. To communicate effectively in relationships. Effectively. That, that's the key word right there. Effectively. Mm-hmm. I think one of the part points is that when you begin to communicate, you learn more about yourself. Mm-hmm. And you learn a lot of negatives sometimes um, mm-hmm. that you are blindsided to. You don't see it. Yeah. Um, yes. But your spouse sees it because he, he or she is closest to you. And so that form of communication sometimes can be muddled because you don't want to find out the truth about yourself. Right. So right. you shut down, you put up this wall, okay, I don't want to hear it, we don't want to talk about it, then, and leave it. Instead of saying, well, tell me more. What, show, me, show me what I'm not seeing in me. Right. Um, and that's so important to me. Um, sometimes, I, like I'm talking now, I can, I can talk over him, and he'll, be, he'll just sit there and just, just be listening and take it. And, and then later on, he would be like, well, you know what? You talked over me, so I couldn't tell you. And so then I'm be like, okay. I'd be mad at first. I'm not going to lie. I'm like, I ain't going to step you. What are you talking right. about? And then I think about it. The Lord showed me. And then I'm like, dang, I was wrong. <laughs> you know, but you have to be willing to be wrong sometimes. Yes. Sometimes it's a lot of times, <laughs> you know, that you're right. going to be wrong. But yeah. if, if you have that open communication and the, the spouse that's ready to tell you, you're in the wrong, or even when you're on the right, then that's what you need to, to really solidify things. And it, and it, and it takes time to respond. Because mm-hmm. she can say something to me, and I may not respond <laughs> for another 20 minutes. I may not respond for another day. And I'll be like, hello, are you here? Are you right, here? right. <laughs> Ask you a question and be like, hold on, I'm thinking. Yeah, you know, it, it takes time. And, you know, you have to think about it because you don't want to say the wrong thing. You don't want to mm-hmm. respond the wrong way. Right. So, you know, communication uh, takes time. Mm-hmm. It does take time. It takes time for, for her and it takes time for me. Yes. Um, and, I, and, I, and I'm a thinker, so I, I have to think about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me so too. she may ask me a question and I may not answer her for for a half an hour. And she'd be like, where did that come from? Right. Where, I'm already on a different subject. Right. I'm on a different subject now. But it, it's just, I, I, I just need to think about it. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's good that I know that about you. Mm-hmm. you know, because if I didn't know that you were a thinker, it will cause a problem with us. Right. So it's that's good. why we need to know each other's character. Mm-hmm. That's why you need to know your partners too, right? Because yeah, it really, definitely. Definitely. yeah, it really kind of 
alleviates a lot of confusion, right? If I know my partner mm -hmm. is not a responsive person, like me, I'm like you, Denise, I like, right? <laughs> you know, but I know that whoever God sends me would have to be a person that's patient with me because I can cut somebody off. I need him to be like, hey, babe, give me a minute. Let me get my point across, okay? <laughs> Yeah. And, because, you know, sometimes I don't think about what I say as much as I would like to. Hmm. And it's good that you know you, Shalane. Yes. Um, so that he'll, he'll know that from the beginning. Yes. Because you got to come correct and don't come at all. You know? Right. <laughs> Just totally. You know? And if he's accept, accepting of that and you are his, then you, it's a win-win. You know? Yes. Um, a lot of times we try to hide our character. Yeah, ain't no hiding no over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no hiding. I want to talk about transitions in marriage because a lot of people don't talk about that. And a lot of people feel like transitions are exit signs, <laughs> unfortunately, that when it it's transitions that somebody leaves the marriage instead of working through those transitions. You guys have been through quite a number of transitions, moving different ministries, and also uh, having your children be grown and having grandchildren, right? Um, how have you dealt with those life transitions? And what do you do when you've had hard moments or like realizations where maybe it's become a little depressing? You know, like I feel like when my kids leave, I'm gonna break down, you know, for a little bit. Please uh -huh. don't, don't start because <laughs> this one right here, I was, listen, our daughter got married um, on Valentine's Day. Um, 21 and it was he did ask for her hand in marriage maybe like a week and a half before that but it was just so sudden for us and um to realize that another one of our babies was flying the coop and yeah. so this one he said he i mean he's still having his moments so but the whole day he just said i don't know why i'm having these moments <laughs> like it's okay to have your moments just don't stay there you got, right. you know, and I think that's important in in a relationship for you to realize the season that your partner is going through. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we we're going through this together, but our reactions are different. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I think what's what's good has been good with us is that we've been balanced, so that when one is down, the other one is up. That's good. In the same way, you know, I come down and you up, so we there's always one to come yank you out. You know, I. He had been dealing with a physical issue concerning his eyes. Um, and I told him one day, I said, get up. You've just been laying in the bed. I said, get up. I pulled back the shades. That's the right. Get up. And I began to pray. And so then I told my son, I said, go take your father. He can't drive. I said, go take your father to the store. Get him out. He needs to be out of the house. He needs to get out now. And so my son took a drag him to the store. And, and, and when he came back he was like you know i needed to get up i was like i know you need to i needed for you to get out too right um, it's important to recognize and see there's one thing that apostle michelle johnson bless her heart um she taught a long time ago the lesson to that we have to um we have to see what spirit is in control at the time yeah. mm. you have to identify that spirit and sometimes you don't know what the name of the spirit is, but you've got to begin to pray and go into your secret closet. Lord, show me what spirit am I combating? The spirit of depression was trying to creep up on him. And so mm -hmm. you got to tell that spirit to get out your house. You That's gotta right. You out now in the name of Jesus. And so it's important for us to recognize spiritually that this is God's house and, and that nothing is going to penetrate it that's not of God. And so I think that this, the one thing that we all have to learn to do is invite God in. The house has to is not complete without his spirit. And so many times we bring in anger, we bring in deceit, you know, we bring in things of the past, but we cannot forget to invite God in. And mm -hmm. so when we do that, when we recognize who's in control of the house, God will be present. His spirit can hover in this place. We want him to be here always. We don't want his spirit to leave from here. And so therefore, we've got to really go in the word. We've got to come back to the spirit by the spirit. Um, and I think that's so important to be equally yoked with another yes. believer. And so when, again, 
when I'm down, you up, and vice versa. Amen. I love that. Um, I always talk about equally yoke because I think equally yoke is definitely about being with a believer, but it's also about being with someone who compliments you, right? Um, and who knows who you are and um, can be equally yoked on all levels. And I think that's important, right? Like, I mean, when I used to see you guys, you guys I knew you were husband and wife, of course, but you guys look bro like brother and sister too, right? <laughs> you know what they say. When you've been with somebody for so long, you start looking like them. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I love that. I love the fact that, um, yes, I agree. Like, you have to be... Um, in tune. And I think that's what a lot of people are missing, right? To be in tune with another. I love what you said when one is up, one is down, because there's so many points where a partner misses the emotions of the part of the other partner, right? Or is not in tune with them. Mm -hmm. And it causes so much distress, you know? <laughs> like, yes, I'm not myself this week because I'm I'm emotionally down. You know, but if you can pull me up, then guess what? We we gonna be able to be up there together. So I love that, and I think that's the work of partnership, right? Yes. Um, in a world where people look for all kind of material things for partnership and things outside of carnal things, right? Um, lessons from the heart. I want you to tell me, like maybe some epiphanies you had in your marriage that really transformed you. That you can share. Um, well, one having children um, from the beginning, um, that was like an instant maturity lesson. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, being that we were so young, um, it was like, okay, but well, you graduated high school, now you gotta grow up. Your your wife, your mother, um, that mm -hmm. was difficult transition because I still hadn't been growing. I'm still not growing as far as I'm concerned. Right. There's so many more growth in me, things to do and things to learn. Um, but the transitions, having transitions is, you know, I'm going to hold your hand through this. Um, I'm not going to let you go. Um, even though um, I believe this, you know, your kids are going to leave one day, all of them. Who's going to be left? You know, so we got to make sure that we still holding hands through all of this. I remember I was going through a problem with my eyesight a few years ago and I could not see. Um, and my husband held, he held my hand through it all. Took me to the doctor, held my hand in there, in their back, um, made sure I wasn't tripping on He He really stepped up to the car um, to take care of me. And Good. me vice versa, when he was sick, we didn't know that we were going to go through so many trials physically, um, especially in the last few years of where we really, really had, couldn't rely on each other, couldn't rely on ourselves, but had mm -hmm. to rely on one another to care for, for each other. Yes, and so yes. So that transition, you know, sometimes you sit and go, you know, when we get real old, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> like, but we believe that our ladder will be greater. So we have, mm. through it all, managed to, again, to be, be like a check and balance for one another. That's good. Um, to, to make sure uh, make sure you took your medicine. How, how was your sugar? How was your pressure? You know, we, we stay up on one another. And then we have our, our time of where we get away from all of it. And so we have been practicing vacationing. Um, every couple of months, we go away, whether it's two hours away. I love it. An hour away to a hotel in Atlanta. Um, for just for three, four days, just so sometimes it's, we just relax and we might sleep all three days, but it's a refreshing for us because we're together. And so we've learned to now to put everything aside. There's got to be moments of where everything doesn't matter. Just, just you, him and God. And so that has been a refresher for us and it's helping us get through a lot of our transitions in life. So we can't, can't neglect to spend time together. Yeah, I right. love it. At the same time, you can't neglect the children. Mm -hmm. It's so mm -hmm. important. I mean, we have, we have nights where we come together as a family with the children. We pray, we have communion, mm -hmm. and we talk. You know, some, sometimes we, we laugh. Sometimes we cry. Sometimes... Uh, 
um, most of the time, daddy's daddy's the angry one. Not it's not not angry, but I, I'm the stern one. I'm, yeah. This, this is what we need You're to do. Structured one. This is this is we have to do this. This is what we need to do, and um, because the children are one way when I'm home, and then they're another way when yeah. I'm not home. They feel like they can be free. And, it, and it's okay. It's okay. And, and I understand that. I understand that, you know, they, they like to be around mommy. Mommy is there. Mommy is that loving one. Yeah, mommy is that one. But, but when daddy comes in, okay, we know, okay, we got to bring it in. We got to bring That's it right. in order. That's this, reverence. This, this, is, this is how we should be. And, and you know, sometimes I, I, I feel like I've missed a lot because I'm so mm -hmm. hard. You know, um, and you know that's and that's the way I was raised. I, I was yeah, raised yeah. with a father who was stern. Yes, he, he was stern. All I knew was, I'm, you know, there were times that he took me to work with him. You know, and at work I was, you know, I had fun around the people at his job. But when I was around him, it was different. Right. There was times he took me fishing. You know, he taught me how to fish. You know, we had our good times, but um, being around him was kind of fearful for me. Yes, yes. It was, it was, it, it was, it was fearful being around him. Um, but I knew that he loved me. If I, if I didn't know anything else, I knew that my father loved me. I knew that my mother loved me. Yeah. So, you know, it, it was hard for me to balance you know, raising, you know, when raising my children, you know, yeah. she brought that balance in for me. She brought the loving part. That's in good. She taught me how to love. She taught me how to be a little more loose, a little more free. So let my head. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah, I love that. I love that because I think that's what makes a good marriage, right? Is that one person is one way. And that's why marriage is still needed. Like, you know, people are getting away from it now because I think they look at the institution of marriage different, you know, in a negative connotation, negative way so many times. Mm -hmm. But I think God has put two people together because he knows what's, what's inside of us. Right. And so he knows that here I am feisty chalet, you know, we need somebody who's probably calm and thinking and more strategic. And, you know, I wish I had my mother's, uh, you know, organization skills, okay? uh, <laughs> because I'm more like spontaneous all over the place, you know? <laughs> right, right. So I need somebody who has a little OCD, you know? <laughs> so I think yeah. that's, you know, still a good purpose of marriage. Um, yeah. I want you to speak about, uh, I think that, you know, on, on that vein of marriage, um, why do you think mar the institution of marriage is still, uh, viable today, not only because the word says it, right? We know that God loves marriage. He loves family. But from a married couple that's been together over 30 years, what do you guys say? Especially for men, because men, I don't know, they don't see marriage the same way. Kind of, kind of, kind of, sort of. I think, I think the, the, the main thing is balance. Balance in yeah. life. It takes two to balance. You can't balance just one. I mean, I, I, my hat is off to, to single mothers that raise their children. It, it really is. But there, there needs to be balance. There needs to be, there, there needs to be, like, like I said, with, with, with us, you know, she was the, the, the happy-go-lucky, and I was the stern one. But when you mm -hmm. bring it together, it brings balance. And there, or there needs to be balance in the home. I think that, that one of the things is there has to be a willingness for both parties. Um, sometimes you get to a part. I, I don't know what's wrong with, with society today, but we want to give up too fast. Yeah. Um, mm. It's like, I'm going to now, if it don't happen, I'm moving on. That's it, next. Yes. Um, so I, I think if we have the willingness, first on both parties is where it needs to start um, because we have to come to a point where we realize this this ain't working you know let's try something different 
Um, but we've got to be willing to try. Um, there's got to be some type of remediation um, between the two parties in order for you to come together and communicate well. And I think that it's, it's really, um, it's, we don't want to be hard on the children as well. There's children involved. Mm -hmm. um, but this, this day and age, you're just ready to go. It's like, you know, it, I'm doing me type of, you know, we got that mm. I'm doing me type of mentality. And if you want to be in a relationship, it's no longer you doing you. It's us mm -hmm. doing and staying together. And so even though I don't need my husband's approval on everything that I do, it's still out of respect right. um, for him. And the same for him to me. Um, sometimes I'll be like, why are you asking me if you could do this? You, you know, <laughs> just go ahead and do it. You know, you don't have to ask me if you, if you put shallots in the, you know, <laughs> something do it you know but it's that willingness of a to seek approval from one another um knowing that it's in our own best interest because we need to be on one accord how can two walk together stay yes. free? so we've got to be on one accord in, in order to advance you know we can't you can't say let's move to tennessee and i'm saying let's move to south carolina we got to be on one accord yes. okay what are we gonna say Okay, let's move to Atlanta. You know, so it, it's really important to have the willing spirit to make things work instead of saying, I'm just going to make it work for me. Um, so I believe that there's a selfishness that's mm -hmm. rolling across the land. Um, yes. Only seeking validity, validity for oneself instead of saying, oh, this is my partner. We got to work this together. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think I go back about 10 years. We had a, a a very serious situation where we were going to break up, where we were going to separate. But the thing that the, the thing with me was I thought about the children. I thought about the children. It, 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 I thought about what we had been through for the first 20 years of our marriage. And mm -hmm. did I want to throw that away? Was that something mm -hmm. that I just wanted to throw away? But then I also thought about my children. What example would that be for my children? You know, and think about how my children would be raised and how they would grow up thinking. So we together put our heads together and, and we worked it out. We, we worked it. We did a yeah, we did a redo. But it brought us closer together, but at the same time, it let my children know that in spite of what we had been through, that we could work it out, you know, we could still, you know, be a family, still love each other. Move past and her. move past her. Move past pain. Mm -hmm. Um just move past everything. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. everything to say we gonna make this right. I love and it. We start willingness. Mm -hmm. I love that because hard times will come is what do you do about hard times, right? Like they're gonna come. You know, one and I love the fact that you told that story about you know, almost 20 years. People always look and say, why do we break up after 20 years? Because they, because people go through things, you know? People go through things. Life. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. they in, we, in this we, life. We still go through things. You know, and sometimes people don't rediscover each other until years down the line, right? Or people change and they're like, wait a minute, I don't think I like who you are right now, you know? Right. And so they, it takes a redo. It's a constant cycle yes. of, I'm going to make this work, right? And that's why I never like the 50-50. I'm going to give 100 and you give 100. Because one time, one day, right. you're not going to give 100. And I need you know what I'm saying? That's good. That's good. So I love that. I love that. It is, it is, a, it is, a, I love the fact that you said we put our heads together and decide to make this work. Because that's really what it is. You know, you right. both making a decision that we're going to make this work. Right. You know? Yeah. And it's just like, it's just like when people say, like when they introduce couples, they, they talk about they talk about the man and they talk about the woman and they talk about you know he walk, his wife that walks behind him. No, she shouldn't be walking behind me. We should be walking together, yeah, as as one. Not not you walking in one place and I'm walking in another place. I'm walking behind you, or you walking behind me. No, no, we should be walking together as you know as one 
for one another. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's that's so good. How do you deal with um I had somebody to say, please ask them this question. So I said I'm gonna do it. How do you deal with <laughs> <laughs> Family and friends. That be careful. Be careful. <laughs> I know. I know. Be careful with the answer. Family and friends <laughs> that may come against the marriage. Like a lot of people have trouble with in laws, and oh my gosh, it causes so many problems. How do you deal with that? You know what? You know what? It don't even. It don't even matter. See, my wife. My wife is very smart because she didn't tell me all the things that were said about us getting married. In the beginning, okay. I'm, I'm well, you know, it's tough. my mother, my mother was against it. Um, other family members, they were against it. Um, for, for people that don't know, I, I was adopted. So my mother and father that raised me and then my real mother, she was against it. She didn't believe that it was going to happen. She said, don't worry, they're not going to make it. You know, and I'm glad that she didn't tell me that back then because um, she let you know me and my mom. Yes, so yeah. It, it might not have been, it might not have been nice, but here we are 31 years later. You know, next month, March 8th, would be 31 years and wow. we're still together. I think one of the things is we don't allow other people to come in and cause discord. Um, you're not going to talk about my husband. Right. <laughs> he makes some of my kids do it. <laughs> right. And vice versa. You know, you're not gonna say anything negative to him about me. We don't give you the opportunity to put a foot in the door. Don't feed into um, it. That, yeah. That's it, like oh, so yeah. just don't feed into mm-hmm. it. And anybody who wants to buck up against what God has joined together, mm-hmm. let no man put a sun up. So yes. if I, if it takes me not talking to you anymore, so be it. Because that's this it. is the one I was ordained to work with for the rest of my life. So if you have something to say about my household or don't come into agreement with it, you stay on outside of my house. I That's don't right. That in. You know, we, we have to remember um, friends come and go. Even relatives come and go. They, you know, our, our kids are gone. You know, so we yes. don't let your kids cause discord um, because they're not going to be there forever. That's so right. um, we have to learn to really come out fighting when it comes to um, our peace, our joy, our happiness, we got to learn to combat that spirit by the spirit again um, mm-hmm. and, and really go in. You're not going to come to my house talking no smack. You know, we, it, it's just it's just a level that we're on that you you know you ain't going to come against us and, and, right. and, and let it be known. You know, <laughs> you may talk your stuff behind doors, but you ain't going to come to us with no stuff about one another. Um, so I think that you you have to learn to squash stuff at the root. Um, right. mm-hmm. Just just kill it, just kill it. We are not having this. I love this it. ain't your relationship is mine. I told my girls when you get married, let your stuff stay in your house. I don't need to know what's going on in there unless you need me to pray about something. Right. But you can't. That's you can't invite anybody in. Everybody yeah, can't so handle good. your stuff. You know, so everybody can't handle. You know. The, the way they see you um and we've had a lot of people murmur so we've heard you know about our relationship so what we had a we had a pastor here who said y'all always together he said it in such a neg- negative way and i was like and you, right. you and your wife ain't <laughs> so I, I don't never see you with your wife right so you know don't start there um uh, this is solid this is solid as a rock and can't nobody break that down you, you right. gotta you gotta remember that nobody no man no woman no boy no girl can come against what god is building amen i love and it one, i love one, it yes <laughs> and one thing one thing i've also learned is that you have to be careful who you allow on yourself yeah. everybody can't be your friend everybody can't be a part of your personal circle yeah you know I, i've made that mistake uh many times over the years but I realize that everybody can't be a part. We've had people that have come to our house, uh, couples who have come to our house so, uh, so that we could counsel them or help them out or whatever the case may be Minister. to vent. To vent. Mm-hmm. And they come to our house and the spirit that they bring in our house is so mm-hmm. heavy that when they leave, we find ourselves arguing. Mm-hmm. So I, I, you know, 
I, I've come to, you know, I've, I've expressed to her, no more will we allow people in our house, mm -hmm. you know, unless God tells us. Mm -hmm. That's you right. Know, you just got to be careful because people travel with all these different kinds of spirits. Yes. And you don't want that running rampant in your house. Yeah, eggs in your house. Right. So mm -hmm. just got to have to be careful about the people that you, you got to know those who labor among you. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's so true. The spiritual world is so powerful. People don't understand. Yeah. You think you helping somebody and they leaving some tad bits in your rooms and stuff like that. And then you're like, right. why are we not getting along? We, we trying to counsel right. them and we calling ourselves right, right, in the same right. position. Right. Yeah. I, I, so I, I love what you said. You have to be so careful. I, even God told me in the last year, be careful who you let in your home, Chalet. You know? So I've been careful who I even let through my door because I don't need any spirits in here with my children, you know, so that 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 is a word in itself. Um, counseling other couples is such a, a big thing, too. Right. Um, in these days where, where people are looking for people like you guys who have been together 31 years up and down. People are looking for y'all to just give wisdom. So I'm going to ask you on the program to give some wisdom to some couples that may be listening the top thing that's like, if I had to tell a couple one or two things, this is what I want them to know. If you had to tell a couple what? One or two things. One or two things, what would they be? I would say don't Listen. give up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Number one, um, don't be eager to throw in the towel because of their circumstances. Mm. Um, circumstances can come and they can also go. Um, so you have to really be mindful of what you're dealing with. Um, so number one, your persistence is key to a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, babe. No, I was just going to say, and I'm not trying to be deep, but number one is make God your nucleus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make God your nucleus. Because with him as your nucleus, you will never, mm -hmm. so good. ever, ever go wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would say is refresh daily. Um, don't think that what you did yesterday is going to make it for today. Refresh daily. It's going to take that um, because, again, we grow, we change. Um, we make decisions that, that flip and reverse things. But you've got to be willing to refresh, not just yourself, but you have to refresh yourself first because you can't respect yeah, somebody yeah. else until you do so. But you got to refresh it. There's many days I've gone in the bathroom, <laughs> lock the door, and just, oh, Lord, Jesus, please fix it. Um, and then I come out and I'm okay. And I'm like, okay, Jesus, I'm going to let you do this. I'm going to let it go and let you do it. Um, so I need to refresh myself first. And I always go, will change my mindset if I'm doing something wrong. Lord, right. please show me what I'm doing wrong that I need to change about me. So you need to refresh yourself first and then go refresh who he or she is. And um, mm -hmm. whether that's going to take me boosting the confidence, whether it's going to take a, a prayer, um, whether I, I need to anoint him with oil from head to toe. It, it's happened, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> you know, but it's gonna, you need to refresh one another because you, again, have to recognize the spirit that's in control of him or her at the time. Mm -hmm. So... I, I believe that your refreshing in your relationship is so important. So find out what you need to do to refresh. When, when things get stale, when things seem like rock bottom, find something to refresh yourself. Amen. I want to close with talking about your ministry that you guys do together, the Well Ministry. And what made you start that ministry? And um, just talk about it. Like, you guys minister together. That's a blessing in itself, right? To have a couple that minister together. <laughs> so t t t tell us a little bit about that. Home, the first church. Huh? <laughs> yeah. um, big ministry has been many, many, many years yeah. in many capacities um, yeah. for us. Um, administrative, pastoral. Um, it's just been a life of service for us. Amen. Um, I think because it's been embedded in us from the beginning, um, mm -hmm. both of us, um, rooted and grounded in the church. Um, so leadership um, has, yeah, we both, we love to serve. Um, it's our life. Whether it's, you know, 
our food is serving. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I remember we used to, I used to serve on the line after all the joy ministries. Yeah. Like, you got your plate? And I'd be like, no, I'm going to make sure everybody ate before I get my plate. That's that was right. just servitude. I just wanted to make sure everybody else was taken care of. And so it has been a life for us of care. Mm -hmm. um, we've used that ministry in many capacities. At home is really where the point has, has been driven. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had many people sit on our sofa for counseling. We've had many people come and cry on our shoulders because they couldn't go to their leadership. And it was mm -hmm. so important for us to be there for people. We have a love for mm -hmm. people. And so we've combined that, that love um, with um, our, our physical business as well to serve to go out on the streets and serve people who are hungry mm -hmm. and so um, when we came here um, my husband it, it was planted in him he said I'm gonna go out and feed the hungry and so we started with a couple of plates and then it started taking off like every every week um, we were going out there on the streets of Atlanta not not during the daytime out there in the dark and in the cold and where they were hanging out and smoking and doing drugs and stuff we wanted to love on the people and god gave us the tool to do that through food and so that has grown and we go to to the shelters and we minister through food mm -hmm. um we go into we drop the food at, at, at various people's homes without their knowledge um we have just been a, a support to feed the hungry god has allowed us to feed them not only naturally but spiritually and so now we also have our, our ministry, the well. You want to go? You can talk about the well. And the well, once a month we meet online. And um, last year, I don't even remember last year. <laughs> <laughs> last year he had me. He said, he said there are people out there that have a word, and their voices are not being heard. So good. So every month he had me to, you know, select a different. He would give me a different person. And we would come online and they would minister. And this year he told me it was about our young people. So I love month, it. this year uh, we have a young person ages. I mean, last night we had a young lady on. Adriana. Whiteman, the white man's daughter. Uh, she's in the fourth grade and she was awesome. Yes. She was powerful. She talked about the hope, talked about the hope of God. I um, love it. So, so, as you know, we have some, some other ones coming up for the next couple of months. And the Lord already told me next year it was couples. So, mm. <laughs> so next year I'll be having couples on the line coming in minister. I love it. But just as, as God did it to me, you know, I don't want to do anything outside of God's will for me, will for our lives, you know, will for ministry. You know, people, everybody that. They're trying to get a big church, want to be a prophet, want to be a pastor, want to be a bishop. Pastor, I'm, not, I'm not looking for them. I just want to do whatever God will. If it's his will for me to be one of those, that's fine. But I just want to do it God's way and God's way only. Amen. I think we need more leaders, more ministries with servants' hearts, right? It's so many people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's how that's how we all began for me. I mean, mm -hmm. out of a Baptist church in Brooklyn, New York, 25, 25 Snyder Avenue, as a child, um, serving my pastor. Yes. You know, serving my pastor, then serving my father, and then from there, serving Bishop and Apostle Wiley, and then came here, and I, I was, you know, serving, you know, Man. so just serving and serving, that's, that's all I, I know. If I don't know anything else, if I can't do anything about if I can't preach in the pulpit, if I can't you know lay hands on the sick and they recover just serving, I'll be fine with that. Amen. I know that that's planned in the will of God. Uh, serving has the greatest impact. It has the greatest impact. It touches the masses. Mm -hmm. yes. So I love that. I, you know, I'm almost scared of leaders that have never served. It's a totally different attitude. It's a different leadership style um, when you are under a leader who's never served. I think that servitude is before anything. Even Jesus served. That's right. That's right. I mean, so if Jesus served, then why don't we think we have to serve 
because God gave us gifts and no, that's not the way it goes. You know, I'm like so over these people with these gifts and anointings and they think they so holier than how they can't pick up a tissue or wipe a bathroom anymore or feed a homeless, you know. Um, and so I love that. I know you guys have always had a servant's heart and that's amazing. Amazing. Well, I want to close by just let the viewers know how they can find you about your catering. If they want your catering, if they want to join in on your ministries once a month, how can they find you? Oh, God. You can find us uh, on all social media platforms, The Chef and The Planner. Um, also, our website, www.theshef, the letter N, the planner. Um, that's the best way to reach us um, for all things. Um, also, our emails, uh, chefandplanner at gmail.com. Yes. Um, and reach the ministries, the well, flwc at gmail.com. Flwcga <laughs> at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I love it. I love it. And I'm going to be joining in to some of those young people. I love to hear young people preach. They warm my heart. Um, it's been some aw awesome services from the ones that I dialed in. And I was um, very honored to be a speaker at one time for the well. Yes. So I love it. Thank you. You guys are doing great. Um, tell the, the viewers, I don't think they know. I know, so I didn't say anything. But how many children you have, how many grandchildren you have, so they can know that like, this is real over here. <laughs> Six children, four grandchildren. Yes. <laughs> Can't even count. Yes. Six children, four grandchildren. Yeah, you know so the, the grandchildren are so cute. They're always gone? over the house now. Yeah, Do you ever have a quiet I, moment? I was yeah. together. No, no, no. Uh, yours and mine. No all hours. Children. All oh. came out of this womb. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh my God. What a blessing though, right? To see your grandchildren thriving, your children thriving. And I can't believe it. Your youngest got married. That just makes me feel some type of way. It's crazy. <laughs> Is this Shekinah? No, no, no. Courtney. Courtney. Okay. Okay. Yes. Oh my gosh. Tom flies. Well, congratulations. Yes. Um, yes. I hope people tune in to hear the powerful message you gave about marriage, why marriage is still alive and kicking today why god still requires marriage and why he still loves marriage especially godly marriage right a marriage where two people are walking together and it doesn't mean that times will always be great but it means that if you have god as the nucleus as you said right you can get through anything and everything yeah, right. so thank you for that message thank you in the month that we you. celebrate love <laughs> we remember to love all months every day all the time because that's what God requires us to do. So stay tuned. We have one more guest that's coming on. Pastor Sean Quayla coming on to end out the yes, month. Yes, yes. Yes. And um, I just wanted to say thank you. Blessings to everyone. Bye-bye. Bless thank you. you.